In this video, we will explore more how pencils are made. Chunks of graphite, a soft dark mineral, and clay are placed inside a huge rotating drum. Large rocks inside the drum crush the graphite and clay into a fine powder. Then water is added, and the mixture is blended in the drum for up to three days. A machine squeezes all the water out of the mixture, leaving behind a grey sludge. Here, a worker puts the sludge in a cabinet where it air dries and hardens for four days. Huge wheels grind the dried sludge into another fine powder, and water is blended in again to make a soft paste. The paste is pushed through a metal tube and comes out in the shape of thin rods. The rods are cut into pencil length pieces, called leads, and sent along a conveyor belt to dry. After drying, the pencil leads are put into an oven heated to 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. The intense heat makes the leads smooth and hard, which makes for good writing points. In another part of the factory, the wood is prepared. Machines cut blocks of incense cedar wood, a renewable resource, into wide slats. Eight shallow grooves are sawed lengthwise into each slat. A thin coat of glue is applied to the slats, and one pencil lead is placed into each of the eight grooves. Within seconds, another wide grooved slat is glued on top, sandwiching the leads. When the glue dries, the slats are fed through a cutting machine. Fast revolving steel blades trim the wood into round or hexagonal shapes, one side at a time. The same machine cuts apart each slat into eight separate pencils. The pencils are sanded, and each one receives from five to eight coats of paint. A heated metal stamp presses the name of the company, and a number such as the number two on the pencil in foil or paint. The number indicates how hard the pencil lead is. A metal band, called a ferrule, is wrapped tightly around one end of the pencil. It holds the eraser, which is being added here. The pencils are then ready to be sharpened, packaged, and used. One of the oldest and most widely used writing utensils, the pencil originated in prehistoric times when chalky rocks and charred sticks were used to draw on surfaces as varied as animal hides and cave walls. The Greeks and Romans used flat pieces of lead to draw faint lines on papyrus, but it was not until the late 1400s that the earliest direct ancestor of today's pencil was developed. About 100 years later graphite, a common mineral occurring as soft lustrous veins in rocks, was discovered near Borrowdale in northwestern England. The Borrowdale mine supplied Europe with graphite for several hundred years, however, because people could not then differentiate between graphite and lead, they referred to the former as black lead. Cut into rods or strips, graphite was heavily wrapped in twine to provide strength and a comfortable handle. The finished product, called a lead pencil, was quite popular. In the late 16th century, a method for gluing strips of wood around graphite was discovered in Germany, and the modern pencil began to take form. In 1779, scientists determined that the material they had previously thought was lead was actually a form of microcrystalline carbon that they named graphite, from the Greek graphene meaning to write. Graphite is one of the three natural forms of pure carbon the others are coal and diamond. In the late 18th century the Borrowdale mine was depleted, and, as graphite was now less plentiful, other materials had to be mixed with it to create pencils. A Frenchman chemist, Nicolas Jacques Comte, discovered that when powdered graphite, powdered clay and water were mixed, molded and baked, the finished product wrote as smoothly as pure graphite. Comte also discovered that a harder or softer writing core could be produced by varying the proportion of clay and graphite. The more graphite, the blacker and softer the pencil. In 1839, Lothar von Faber of Germany developed a method of making graphite paste into rods of the same thickness. He later invented a machine to cut and groove the pencil wood. Following the depletion of the once abundant graphite source of Borrowdale, other graphite mines were gradually established around the world. A number of these mines were set up in the United States, and the first American pencils were manufactured in 1812, after the War of 1812 ended English imports. William Monroe, a cabinet maker in Concord, Massachusetts, invented a machine that cut and grooved wood slats, precisely enough to make pencils. Around that time, American inventor Joseph Dixon developed a method of cutting single cedar cylinders in half, placing the graphite core in one of the halves, and then gluing the two halves back together. In 1861, Eberhard Faber built the United States' first pencil-making factory in New York City. Today, the hardness of a pencil is designated by numbers or letters. Most manufacturers use the numbers 1 to 4, with 1 being the softest and making the darkest mark. Number 2 pencils, medium soft, are used for normal writing. Pencils are also sometimes graded by letters, from 6B, the softest, to 9H, the hardest. The idea of attaching an eraser to a pencil is traced to Hyman W. Lippmann, an American whose 1858 U.S. patent was bought by Joseph Rechendorfer in 1872 for a reported $100,000. In addition to the conventional wood pencil, a number of other pencils are widely used. In the early 1880s, the search for a pencil that didn't require sharpening led to the invention of what has variously been termed the automatic, propelling, or repeating pencil. 
These instruments have a metal or plastic case and use leads similar to those found in wood-cased pencils. The lead, lodged in a metal spiral inside the case, is held in place by a rod with a metal stud fastened to it. When the cap is twisted, the rod and stud move downward in the spiral, forcing the lead toward the point. The most important ingredient in a pencil is the graphite, which most people continue to call lead. Kant's method of combining graphite with clay is still used, and wax or other chemicals are sometimes added as well. Virtually all graphite used today is a manufactured mixture of natural graphite and chemicals. The wood used to manufacture pencils must be able to withstand repeated sharpening and cut easily without splintering. Most pencils are made from cedar, specifically California cedar, the choice wood for many years. Cedar has a pleasant odor, does not warp or lose its shape, and is readily available. Some pencils have razors, which are held on with a ferrule, a metal case that is either glued or held on with metal prongs. The erasers themselves consist of pumice and rubber. Two methods are used to form the graphite into its finished state. The first is an extrusion method in which the graphite and wax mixture is forced through a mold to create a spaghetti-like string, which is then cut to precise measurements and dried in ovens. In the second method, the graphite and clay mixture is poured into a machine called a billet press. A plug is placed over the top of the press, and a metal ram ascends from the bottom to squash the mixture into a hard, solid cylinder called a billet. The billet is then removed from the top of the machine, and placed into an extrusion press that forces it through a mold, slicing off strips the size of the pencil core. After being cut to size, the cores pass along a conveyor belt, and are collected in a trough to await insertion in the pencil wood. The cedar usually arrives at the factory already dried, stained, and waxed, to prevent warping. Logs are then sawed into narrow strips called slats, these are about 7.25 inches long, 0.25 inch thick, and 2.75 inches wide. The slats are placed into a feeder, and dropped, one by one, onto a conveyor belt, which moves them along at a constant rate. The slats are then planed to give them a flat surface. Next, they pass under a cutter head that makes parallel semicircular grooves one half as deep as the graphite is thick along, the length of one side of each slat. Continuing along the conveyor belt, half of the slats are coated with a layer of glue, and the cut graphite is laid in the grooves of these slats. The slats without glue and without graphite in the grooves are placed on another belt that carries them to a machine that picks them up and turns them over, so they are laying on the belt with the grooves facing down. The two conveyor belts then meet, and each unglued slat is placed over a slat with glue and graphite, forming a sandwich. After the sandwiches have been removed from the conveyor belt, they are placed into a metal clamp and squeezed by a hydraulic press and left clamped together until the glue is dried. When the pencils are dried, the ends are trimmed to remove excess glue. The next step is shaping, when the sandwiches actually become pencils. The sandwiches are placed on a conveyor belt and moved through two sets of cutters, one above and one below the belt. The cutters above the sandwiches cut around the top half, while the lower set cuts around the bottom half and separates the finished pencils. The majority of pencils are hexagonal, so designed to keep the pencils from rolling off surfaces, a single sandwich yields six to nine hexagonal pencils. After the pencils have been cut, their surfaces are smoothed by sanders, and varnish is applied and dried. This is done with varnishing machines, in which the pencils are immersed in a vat of varnish, and then passed through a felt disc, which removes the excess varnish.